Today, I have something truly special for all of you. One of the best games of 2021, Record of Lotos War, Deedlit in Wonder Labyrinth, which I know is a mouthful. This incredible action exploration title may take inspiration from both Metroid and Symphony of the Night, but make no mistake about it, it does things with the subgenre that few other games have attempted to, and because of that, it ends up being one of the very best. And no, I'm not joking. Record of Lotos War may sound familiar, as the series has spun into multiple mediums since its inception in 1986, including novels, mangas, animes, board games, and yes, video games. The good news is, you don't need to have any previous knowledge or experience with the series in order to enjoy this game. Deedlit, the protagonist, awakens in a mysterious world and needs to find out how she got here and just what the hell is going on. The story is surprisingly emotional as it progresses and deals with the difficulty of coming to terms with loss. Developed by Team Ladybug, who are garnering quite the reputation of developing incredible action exploration titles in beautiful pixel art, such as Toho Luna Nights, Deedlit in Wonder Labyrinth follows the same trend and features some of the very best pixel art I have seen in quite a while. I mean, just look at this thing, it's gorgeous! I have a few notes to make, however. First off, I'm capturing this footage via the Xbox Game Pass for PC, and the game has not been optimized whatsoever for this version. I played through the whole game via the Xbox Series X and it ran like a dream, but for whatever reason, this PC version plays really rough. There's slowdown all over the place, and bizarrely, especially when text appears on the screen. It's just odd, because the original version of this game was released on Steam in 2020, and that played perfectly fine. This 2021 console version runs really well on the PlayStation 4, 5, and even the Nintendo Switch, which is kind of weird with the Switch. The Japanese version's out now, but the North American and European versions of the Switch release are only coming out in January 2022. And it's strange why the PC version of Game Pass plays so poorly when the original played perfectly fine. So I'm hoping there's going to be an update soon, but this review is more for the console versions of the game. The gameplay is classic action exploration fare but with one very important and unique twist. There is a polarization mechanic similar to Ikaruga and Silhouette Mirage, where you switch back and forth between a wind and fire element. Enemies are often weak to one form or another, and attack patterns on bosses will almost always switch between the two, allowing you to absorb incoming projectiles of the same element as Deedlet. There are a couple of very interesting systems at play that link in to the polarization mechanic. First off, as the wind element, you're able to float around the screen, allowing for some creative strategies to use against bosses. The fire element is typically more powerful and has access to an invincibility slide that the wind element does not. You'll notice in the top center of the screen there are numbers, one for the wind element and one for the fire element. As you defeat enemies with the wind element active, you'll gain fire elemental cubes, which power up that element. If you reach level 3, it means your elemental force is at its strongest, and not only will you hit that much harder, but should you get hit, which will decrease your active elemental power by 1, you can then switch to the other element, which, if it's at level 3, will automatically fill up your life bar 1 HP at a time. And this is done to give the game some difficulty, as if it replenished too quickly, the game would be total cakewalk. Now that's not to say this is a tough game, far from it. But I found that the overall difficulty had a nice balance to it, if skewing a little bit towards the easy side of things. Outside of the element system, Deedlit has access to a wealth of melee weapons such as knives, swords, axes, etc. And, for range attacks, a bunch of different bows. All the weapons have their own stats, and you can find new weapons in the item shop, enemy drops, or by exploring. 
exploration isn't as prevalent as something like Metroid, so you won't find yourself backtracking too much over the course of the game, but when you do, it's almost always for a new weapon or magic attack. And that's right, there are magic attacks you can find, as well as your little elemental creature you see flying around the screen there. He can also be upgraded by finding key items scattered around the world. Finally, you can level up, which doesn't change your HP or MP, but does increase both your defensive and offensive stats. All of these systems come into balance to create a truly magical experience. Upon completing the 5 or 6 hour game, you unlock a boss rush mode which allows you to practice your strategies on all the different bosses of the game. There are also some fun achievements and trophies to unlock, although nothing too out of the ordinary. I will say this though, good luck getting an S rank on the archery minigame. That one took me quite a while to crack. Gameplay is incredibly tight and responsive, and coupled with the excellent audio-visual presentation, and you have yourself one of my favorite games of 2021. A huge thanks goes out to Ahmed for recommending this one, and major kudos to Microsoft for their Game Pass service. Thanks to this service, I was able to play this and Toho Luna Nights as part of my monthly subscription. It's amazing. Deedlit itself costs around $30 or so, depending on the platform of your choice and the country you reside in. I can't recommend this game enough, and truly, I cannot wait to see what Team Ladybug does next. Their pixel artwork is stunning, gameplay is refined and a pleasure to experience, and the music and sound effects are spot on. This one gets my highest recommendation.